technology, and I will have the public works director explain the information that's provided in your packet and what exactly CIP does. Good evening, Council Bear, Heidi. Uh, what essentially we're asking the city to consider is we've got uh, about eight or nine manholes around town that when we did our annual cleaning last year, I asked the, the water utilities crew to take note of the deficiencies in the system. So they went around and they cleaned the sewer lines and then they actually are starting to put it together a folder for us and it has the sewer clean reports. And so what's I had, we're trying to figure out how to get this fixed without replacing the manholes because we'd have to bypass pump, replace the manholes and those are between 15 and $20,000 a piece plus bypassing. And so we were, contemplating how to get that done and how to budget for it with limited funds that we've been having uh, when we did our sewer plant upgrades. And so this company came by and Matt and Dan Rawlson had seen them up in Great Falls at the Montana Road Water the last, or no, February, I guess. And they talked about, they were coming to buildings to work on some manholes and fix them and they don't have to replace them. They can just go in there and rebuild them with a fiberglass liner and epoxy. We also put a new bottom in and a new tray where the sewer comes from the manhole. And so part of our report from last year is we identified nine manholes that were deficient. And uh, they came, this gentleman came through town again and said he's going to be in the area doing billings in Joliet. And then he would uh, waive uh, some of the mobilization fees if we could get ours done. And so I went to Helena last week to American Public Works, and that's what it's attached to this other handout you got, where it's a bad man listed. What this is is actually a summary of the written report that's in here. And they, I just had to put it on one sheet, so it's handwritten. I apologize for that. I could have typed it up, but, but it's a summary of what's in here in the sewer report from last year. And if you turn to the second page, there's an example in the upper left-hand corner of a brick manhole, and this is in Helena. And what happens like in the brick manholes is they get a lot of water infiltration. When the groundwater is high, it just flows in there, and then that goes to your sewer plant, and you have to treat that. In the upper right-hand corner, there's a picture of this fiberglass liner that's being rolled out on the street, and they apply a two-part epoxy to that. The bottom left-hand, bottom left picture is actually a PVC liner that they put on there inside that fiberglass. And what that is is a balloon. It's te technically a balloon. And then the bottom right hand corner picture is actually the vessel that they stick inside that that they <coughs> use to blow it up. And what they do is they insert this fiberglass uh, PVC rubber liner down into the manhole with the crane. And that upper right hand picture, you can see where the crane is sitting there, where they can drop this down into the manhole. They blow up that PVC liner and it takes the same shape, it's custom made for that manhole from the factory. They make them specific for that manhole. It blows it up and puts that fiberglass and that resin next to, in this case, bricks. And then they steam it and that steam activates the two-part epoxy and it can 
set up within about two hours, and it's hard as a rock. And it's got a 50-year lifespan. They've been doing it for about 20 years. And so they they told me that they've got mammals that they did for Dermopolis, Wyoming, that they did 12 years ago, and they had hot water entering some of the sewers, and they haven't had a problem with uh, with those, and they installed those 12 years ago for Dermopolis. So, so we were trying to deal with all that, and instead of replacing all these at like $20,000 a pop, which would be $160,000, I was asking for the council to consider uh, hiring this gentleman to come in and uh, fix some of our manholes that are in poor shape. And that's kind of what the report there is. Essentially what it's saying was wrong with them. They're rough on the bottom, they're backing up with toilet paper, and when we did our annual cleaning, they noticed when they popped the manholes, they were plugged right there. So they jet brought them out, and a few of our manholes really don't have a bottom to them. There's nothing there except the clay soil. So they'll come in and replace those. And then, right, yeah. do you say there's nine of them? There's nine, but one of them is being taken care of by a private development that's just down the street. Okay. So the first one that's on the list is actually going to get replaced. What's the number in the certain circle number? That's that's the ones we identified that we could hire CIP to do. And those are the ones in conjunction with the numbers on these pages? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. so the number one, so there's actually nine there, but one of them is getting updated with a development and they have to redo it anyway because the sewer line is bad. So we eliminated number one from that. And that's going to be dealt with the private development. So the other eight. And I just want to reiterate, this is just for when we do cleaning in the city, this is only a third of the city that we identify nine holes. So we're going to do another third of the city, and we may have more in the future. But these are the ones that are primarily down this side of town, the west side, and we've got some of the oldest sewers in town. We have some of the oldest houses in town, down here. And so those are the ones that are, you know, most mammals might be 60, 70 years old, so. And there was um, budgeted in the for maintenance repair of sewer lines, so this was a budgeted item, so it will not require a budget amendment since we are getting close to the end of the year. Um, the sewer fund does have enough to cover this. So, and it'll basically $64,000. Yeah, and if you look at the second page, or third page for that, that's what that brick mantle looks today. I blew it up just so you guys could see what it looks like, and it's hard as a rock. That thing is I mean, hard as a rock, and then they put a new bottom in it, and what happens, instead of bypass pumping, they'll put a new piece of pipe in it, like a new PVC pipe, they'll put the liner in on top of that, they get it all hard, and then they cut the top of the liner and the pipe open, and now you have a brand new PVC tray going through there, so it's no longer concrete, it's actual PVC pipe. Instead of, all the manholes in the city are typically concrete bottoms, and what happens is when you get humidity in them from the H2S that builds up in our system, that H2S produces sulfuric acid, and the sulfuric acid eats away at the concrete and it catches it. And so a lot of the mammals, when we open up, you'll open it up and it's just nothing but rocks. Because the, the, the cream cement has already been worn away, it's gone. And so that's what this takes. So the structure of the mammal is still there, it's still good, but they go in there and reinforce it. And then on the last page, if you've ever driven around in town, and you hit those Mammal list? Oh, yeah. That's what they're going to come in and do. They're going to fix and level some of these, too. So if there's a dip, they have a machine that goes on a skid loader, and it cuts the circle around it. They insert a poly lid on it. The lid can then just be adjusted on that poly with bolts and nuts, and so they can go up and down on that poly pipe. They lock it in place when they get it exactly level. Then they go and pour black. Concrete. They get regular concrete, but they pour it black, so it looks like a black circle instead of a concrete circle. It's, it's black, just like the street. I saw that. I took a picture of that, and I thought, I think the people in Laurel would really like us to have some of these manholes. So they're going to do this. They call Mr. Man. First Avenue. Yeah, and that's one of the things I brought up to our guys is First Avenue is terrible on some of these manholes. So especially all this red motorcycles. Yeah. yeah, we just <laughs> avoid all the money. So I like to use these and to get this and make sure we can get some of this done and then maybe in the future you'll see me come back and in the perfect world I'd love this I'd love to have a skid loader and a machine to do it ourselves because we've got a bunch of them instead of hiring someone to do it but I haven't checked out the prices for this. 
from my understanding, there's only two in the northwest, uh, Montana, or north, northwest United States that has this machine so far. Like I said, it's just big cut. It's four arms and it's got asphalt cutter blades on it, and it just rotates. And then they put that manhole riser on it, and they lock it in place, and then they pour the concrete around it and level them up. So I'd love to do that and more of that in the future so that we can get smoother streets. So I don't like it either. So, so that's what we're asking the council to consider with this, and hopefully you can get the machine and then we use it for tenants and you can lend it to Billy. Yeah. For double the price. <laughs> so this, this gentleman, I did talk to him at length, and I wanted to, to do that, and we went to the demo, so I could come back here with confidence to the city and say, yeah, I think this is a good deal, and I think we should be able to do it, and save us some money instead of replacing cool. the manholes. And that's why I wanted to be here tonight and explain what I went and saw in Helena and answer any questions you might have. Any questions? I think somebody who saved us $100,000. Get the same project balance. And our ultimate goal here is not to have any sewers back up to anyone's house or basement. Mm -hmm. And so when we have these rough surfaces and they collect paper, and what's hitting us really hard is wet wipes, the Clorox wet wipes and the vapor wet wipes. Those get stuck in these manholes. Mm -hmm. and that doesn't deteriorate. So. Well, they stick with the, with the glass liners in it. It's plastic, so it should go right. To, Right through the bottom will be a plastic tray. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Group. Hi, the next item is a resolution to authorize purchase of a breathing air compressor from the Laurel Fire Department. Um, the fire department has a large air compressor unit over there that refills the bottles that they use for their STBAs. And um, according to the fire chief, that air compressor is no longer functional to fill those. And um, he needed to buy a new one at a cost of $45,325. Now this was obviously not a budgeted item, nor does the fire department have the ability to take out a loan at this time, so they're still um, paying on the loan for the FCBAs. So the chief came and talked to Bethany and I and we figured that the best way for him to pay for it would be to pay for it all out of donations and the fire CIP. And the fire department receives um, their own CIP money from the 15% that they receive from the district contracts. And then obviously he receives the, they receive donations from um, private individuals and other various sources. So he will be paying for this totally him, himself out of, out of uh, funds that do not require a loan or come out of the general. Councilmember Dickerson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we discussed this quite a bit at the uh, budget and finance uh, last week, just came before us. And I think the camel that broke the, or the straw that broke the camel's back was the uh, chemical file that uh, they, with their air packs and everything else, trying to fight that fire with the compressor. Just completely failed on. No, it had failed. It had failed prior to that. It had failed at the beginning of April. And well, it was not. It wasn't usable for right. the fire. And, that's and, right. Mm -hmm. And with what we've done in this town and everything else, we just don't know when that situation could occur again. And so that's why the budget and finance committee was very proactive on this as far as getting the compressor for the fire. Any questions? Thank you, The next item is hopefully going to be off of here soon. Um, it is the update on the 2011 um, Yellowstone River flooding event. Um, the intake is online. It's working. Everything in the control building is online. It's working. Um, the <coughs> valve to reduce the flow so that we don't overwhelm the, the the water treatment plant. So um, right now they're just finishing up little little things and restoration. So this project should be done fairly fairly soon. It's pretty exciting. Hopefully substantial completion within the next next week. Any questions? Any 
and comments. No, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me started yet. No. Work. <laughs> I'll wait, now, I'll wait until the next thing comes up that I have paperwork here on. That's not on this. On it's, not, it's under other. We, uh, I figured it is. I'll wait until that comes up. Pick your battles. We have to pick your battles. Um, well, as soon as I think once we reach substantial completion and um, we have a conversation with FEMA, uh, then I can take it off. I, I need to make sure that they're satisfied with. Um, you know, that they asked us to put this on here to make sure that it was brought up every week, that it was at a public meeting, that anyone could ask questions, et cetera, et cetera. So as soon as they're satisfied, then I will take it off the agenda. So, Councilmember Herb. In other words, water will be flowing through the pipes and into the treatment plant mm -hmm. for the next week. week well, it can't do it now. It, it, it can flow in there now. Okay. Yeah. They're just doing you know, little things that m maybe needed to get completed, and then there's all the restoration that needed to be done with the leveling of the ground and the, the planting of grass and, and any trees that were removed that the property owner wanted to put back. And, and so um, they're, they're just doing other stuff, I guess. And, and cosmetic. Some of it. And from this, then now, the refinery can draw water? Well, they currently are drawing treated water because the river's so dirty. So. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to see it go, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. I have more other items. Oh, um, under other items, we had one resolution that didn't, that didn't make it onto the agenda in, in, uh, on Thursday, and that is a resolution for task order number 39 with Great West Engineering to prepare and update the 2011 water and sewer rate study and to make necessary recommendations for the city's existing water rate structure um, when you did the upgrade in 2000 or 2000 when you did the study in 2010 and implemented the water rates in 2011 they expired in 2015 so there has not been a rate increase or any type of adjustment for two years now so um, it's time to revisit the rate in, the rate study and, and structure and um, as you know our reserves have been wildly depleted because of the amount that we've had to expend on um, the intake project with um, no infrastructure being able to be passed, um, we can't not continue to float um, those expenses any longer. You know it's coming, really, Mark. It really uh <laughs> <laughs> President Nails. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I'm not opposed to the study of water and sewer rates. I'm not, not opposed to this specific thing. I am opposed and will be opposed unless there's a heck of a good reason. And I can't think of one right now. Um, to increasing the water and sewer rates. Simply because the state still owes us, and in our minds, still owes us three million. I'm using the term three million, okay, because it's easy to say. Still owes us three million dollars, and I'm not sure we're done with that issue. And that would replenish our reserves. Well, not not to be argumentative, but yeah. um, cities should um, not just stop raising rates, and they should not just stop accruing reserves, which has happened for the last two years. I understand that, but the issue is right now, we right are still in the middle of an issue with the state government mm -hmm. that is not resolved. The governor basically dodged a bullet by shenanigans he's put, he pulled in the legislature this year because my feelings are that if it, our bill had gone in our name to the governor's office and he had vetoed our bill, not the infrastructure bill, because they didn't ever even make it. The bill that was specifically tied to our emergency funds for the water intake, and he had vetoed it, then we would have had the legal obligation to sue him. And we could have done that, because it was him against the legislature, because the legislature passed, would have had passed it. Now, because of the shenanigans the governor's office played, and ended up putting that as an amendment in the infrastructure bill, and then the infrastructure bill failed, not because of his veto, but because of the legislature. 
he basically dodged that bullet. Okay? But I think we still have some recourse. We still have some issues with the fact that this is a federal mandate that he's ignored to do. And maybe we need to pursue some federal means to force the governor. And now I know the feelings about forcing the governor to do anything, but maybe we need to start looking at the federal means to do this. I don't know. But I think we need to pursue that as hard as looking at changing our water rates. I'm not saying we shouldn't change our water rates. I'm just saying until we get that money back, I'm not sure we should change our water rates. Right, we probably wouldn't have to if we if we got the funding from the state. Not saying we didn't. Would. That's why I say I'm not opposed to the water rate study because right. they may that may prove us differently. Right. But I think we need to expend as much energy pursuing what the state owes this city as much as we pursue ch checking our water rate studies. I'm sorry, but I it just it gets it's it's not going away and it's not going to go away. Now, if we can help it, and if the governor wants to be mean and, and not give us any grants for the next 10 years, that's his problem. And we'll, consider, and we'll pursue that if that happens. But right now, I think we need to pursue the money the state owes us, and we've proven they owe us as far as we can, because they won't let us get into a court of law to prove it as much as we, as we pursue this. I'm done now. I'm off my cell phone. Anyone else? Okay, next. <coughs> Item is number five, review the draft council of June May 16th. Something there, we'll go to item six, attendance, May 16th. Everybody wish think they'll be here. It's here. I may not be. Me either. Not Maybe. Sure. Well, some of these other folks better be here. <laughs> item seven, announcements. The only announcement I have is, like I said, it may not be here Tuesday night, but I will be in Billings. So if it's something that's absolutely necessary, call me. It's basically my daughter's coming home from someplace, and we have grandpa to meet for the week. So I have to make a day on the couch. Council Member Hurt. Nothing, sir. Council Member Rossi. I'm not sure. Councilmember Dickerson. I don't think I have anything this time. Thank you. I made recognition of employees.